Hey guys, and welcome to an episode of what we're going to call Whenever Wednesdays. Whenever Wednesdays is going to be kind of like a talk show, uh, maybe kind of like a top five list, you know, whatever we're feeling. We're going to try and post an episode every other Wednesday. And we're calling it Whenever Wednesdays because we don't want to try and force ourselves to make content every other week and then hurt our school grades or anything else. And so we're going to try and post one every other Wednesday, but we might not. So it's we'll post them whenever, whenever Wednesdays. Uh, we'll most likely get one out every time, but you know, just in case, you know, whatever. And whenever Wednesday sounds cool. So today we're going to talk about the timey wimey, wibbly wobbly effects, and coolness of time travel. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love time travel. Time travel is like you watch a movie and you just get sucked into it and you just want to watch more and more and more movies and whenever I watch a time travel movie, I wind up watching five that week because it's just fantastic, I find. So I thought it'd be cool to talk to you guys about how time travel movies um, kind of are structured and the different types of time travel movies there are. So the first type of time travel is called a dynamic timeline. Now this is the most common time travel type and it's uh, the one where you go back in time, you change something, you go back in time, you know, the future's different. The most popular movie that uses this type of time travel is Back to the Future. How they go back in time, they change something, they come back, their life's better. Death goes back in time, change something, their life is worse. So that's the first type. Another type is called the multiverse time travel, something like that. And so this means you go back in time, but you also travel in a dimension. So in this type of time travel, you can go back and you can kill your dad, you're still alive because you're in a different timeline than your timeline. So every time you travel on time, you go to a different timeline and change their timeline. Kind of trippy. But movies that use this is Terminator 2 and Terminator 3. Those are probably the most popular that use that type of time travel. Another type of time travel movie is kind of the looping effect one. So this is seen in Edge of Tomorrow source code and uh, the new movie arc that's on Netflix, the new Netflix original, which is pretty decent. And they went 90% way through the movie before throwing in a paradox, which is pretty good for time travel movies. Talking about paradoxes, it feels like time travel movies are always having something wrong with the type of time travel. There's always something that say, hey, if that happened, why didn't this happen? Why, how is this possible? And this happens not because writers are lazy, and you know, the movie makers are lazy, you know, they didn't think about it too enough, it's just that time travel's very hard. You know, looking at it, you know, once you make it, you can say, oh yeah, I see this and that, I thought we could have changed, but just trying to come up with different timelines and everything that interacts, it's just crazy. It's just way too hard. So, yeah. And lastly, the last type of time travel is called a fixed timeline. Now this is everything has happened will happen kind of thing. So this is like in Harry Potter uh, 3, Prisoner of Azkaban, where you see Harry and Hermione and Ron in the shack with a Hagrid, and then the stones fly through the window, break a pot, and hit Harry in the back of the head, and then later in the movie, you see Harry and Hermione travel back in time and then throw those stones. So it all happens, you know, everything is always going to happen. Now I personally think that this type of time travel is going to be your most common, or your most realistic. Because if you think about it, if someone travels back in time and changes something, the rest of us aren't going to know that something happened. That's going to be our life, you know? I mean, you can say the same thing for dynamic and just say that the person who time travels is the only one that knows. but. I feel like this timeline, this type, is more realistic, you know? If you go back in time to kill Hitler, and then you swap out the baby with another baby, so the parents don't know that you kidnapped the baby Hitler, it turns out that that baby is actually the Hitler we know, not the one you stole. So if you never went back in time to switch it, it probably never would have happened. But because you did it, it will happen. Time travel, right? And, like, this is, like, this causes, a, 
you know, a crazy paradox in my mind, in Tim's mind, because we talk about it like movies like Interstellar, you know, he tells himself that to go to the place where he learns to travel out into space, that's how Matthew McConaughey, his character, gets in that whole organization, but how can he tell himself to go there if he's never been there in the first place? You know, how can, like, if I don't know how to get there, how can I tell myself to get there from the future, you know? What I'm trying to say is there always has to be one loop through that doesn't have time travel in it, you know? So he has to go through it, figure out about that place, go back in time and tell himself about that place. But now if we apply the theory that it's always going to happen, then there isn't a first baseline. So anything in that loop where you go back in time and tell yourself to go there, that loop, you know, technically doesn't exist. So that means anything could happen, right? So like, and then I can come back in time and tell myself, oh hey, if you take a left instead of a right, the next time you walk home, you will find $300,000 in a bag. Who knows if that's true, but I mean, anything's possible, so it is true because I'm telling myself about it, but I don't know about, you know, time travel, it's crazy, right? Some time travel movies that use this type of time travel can be seen in Predestination. One movie that's very, very good that I suggest you go and watch right now, it's called Time Lapse. It's on Netflix, fantastic. What Time Lapse is, it's not your everyday time travel where I myself am time traveling and going to save the world. What it is, is, is their neighbor has a camera that takes pictures of the future and it's pointed right at their house. And so they find it because they're kind of landlords, so they go into the house, they find it, and they figure out what it's doing. So they start posting race days in the window so they can win, they can place bets on races, on dog races and win. And it's really cool because it, uh, another one of their roommates is a painter. And so they'll get a picture, they'll see you know, the races, the race list, they'll bet some money, they'll see the painting he paints, so he'll go and paint it, and then later that night they'll write out the list of the winners, they'll stick that in the window, take the picture, you know, so it's like, it's, it starts this crazy whole loop of, is he just painting the painting because the picture's telling him to, or is he painting the painting because he would've painted that painting anyway? Crazy, it's a really good movie, I suggest you go watch it. The other movie I, uh, I stated there was Predestination. Now, if you don't know what Predestination is, uh, I didn't know what it was either until last week um, when we actually watched it. We saw it on the internet, and it was in a list of movies that will blow your mind. And that list kept coming up in different forms, different movies were on it, but Predestination was always on that list. So it's Tim, Doug, and I, we all decided that we were going to go watch Predestination. So we did. and wasn't very mind-blowing. Now maybe it's because we were expecting it to be mind-blowing, but it wasn't. So pretty much what Predestination is, is them for literally an hour explaining a character's backstory, and then the rest of the movie is the two characters going through the other person's backstory and screwing it up, explaining why the story, you know, why the, the person's backstory is all screwed up. And it's just kind of like, uh, Nah, movie because it's a fixed timeline so the actions they're doing doesn't change anything it's literally just explaining how that character's life is crap so the movie was just kind of meh and the ending was just kind of meh and Tim Doug and I predicted everything right from the beginning because there was one thing they're like okay you're going here where this happened they're like okay so you are literally the person you're trying to stop and then they went and that happened like we thought, and they're like, okay, so that means the rest of the timeline is just them doing it, because, you know. So the whole movie is just them explaining that they did it to themselves, kind of. It, it's, just, it's just a myth movie, if you ask us, so. Yeah, that's, that's 
this episode of Whenever Wednesdays. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this is could be a pretty cool thing we can do. So let us know what you think. If you think we should stop, maybe we'll stop. We might not, you know, whatever. Let us know what you think. Tell me in the comments what, what time travel movies you think I should watch, and I'll get back to you and let you know, because I do enjoy myself a good time travel movie. So get on that. And movies you should go watch is definitely Time Lapse, like I mentioned. You should go check out Project Almanac. That's an MTV movie of a dynamic timeline, and if you can get past the chock full of paradoxes they put in it, then you'll enjoy the movie. I enjoyed it. I mean, you just gotta kinda ignore the time paradoxes, but yeah, it's good. It's a good movie. Go check it out. Also check out Source Code. That's a really good one. one. We watched that one again last week, so those are some three. If you haven't seen, go check those out. So let us know what you think in the comments, and I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you in two weeks.